Hi there, in this video we're going to be talking about how we go about interpreting the coefficients on dummy variables, or something which we call dummy variables in econometrics. So first of all, what do we mean by a dummy variable? Well, in an example of, let's say we're thinking about whether an individual's gender affects some dependent variable, we might create a variable which we call sex, which is equal to 1 if an individual is a female, let's say, and it takes on a value of zero if they are a male. And we might be interested in finding out whether there was any sort of bias in wage rates, which is to do with gender. So we had some sort of dependent variable on, let's say, weekly wages. Then we included a whole host of independent variables that might be important in determining wages. And finally, we included our sort of gender variable. And we sort of re reconcile that we don't think that even if we had all of these determinants, we could determine someone's wages accurately or completely by adding on the sort of error on the end here. OK, so what does our sort of sex variable represent? Well, it, it represents categorical information. There's, there's no order to these two, two particular outcomes. It's just purely a categorical sense. But what does the coefficient on our dummy variable represent in this case? Because... We talked about what the coefficients mean on our sort of normal continuous variables. They represent the sort of marginal effect of that variable if we held all our other variables constant. So what's the interpretation of a coefficient on our sort of dummy variable, which only takes on one of two values? It either takes on a value of one if an individual is, let's say, female, and it takes on a value of zero otherwise. Well, the interpretation is quite easy if we think about what our sort of wages would be if an individual is female and it would be equal to alpha plus a sort of whole host of independent variables and our sex variable would take on a value of one so we'd just be left with beta p because our sort of error here on average would be zero. Okay so that's the average sort of wage which a female might command. Then the idea is that if we then find out the average wage which a male might get on average then it might be sort of alpha plus if we assume that all the other variables are the same then our variable sex takes on a value of zero. So instead of having beta p, we just have zero here at the end. So the idea here is that if I take my sort of average wage rate for females and I take away the average wage rate for males, then all these sort of other variables which are being held constant are going to cancel. So I'm just going to be left with beta p. So in this context, beta p actually represents the wage premium which females would command over males. And normally in econometrics, we think about this wage premium as actually probably being negative. Or in other words, we expect males to command some sort of wage premium over females. That's just sort of an empirical fact that's sort of been proved in a number of studies. There is still some sort of gender bias in the workforce. Um, Thankfully, it seems to be coming down, but there is still this sort of gender bias in the workforce. But by introducing this particular concept in this particular terms here, I'm not, really, I'm not sort of meaning to open up a discussion. Merely what I wanted to do was to demonstrate what the coefficient or what the interpretation is of a coefficient on a dummy variable. OK, so let's think about another case. So let's say we were interested in determining the number of wars which a country undergoes in the next 10 years. And we were saying that depended on a whole sort of host of factors, so their geography, their income, their neighbours, as well as, let's say, some sort of variable, which I'm going to call CW, which represented whether a particular country had undergone a civil war in the past. So this CW here takes on a value of one if the country had undergone war in the past, and it takes on a value of zero if they hadn't experienced a war in their, let's say, last 10 years, for example. So what does beta p represent in this particular case? Well, the idea here is that beta p represents the increased number of wars which a country which had had a civil war in the last 10 years, let's say, was likely to experience on average as opposed to a country which hadn't experienced a civil war in the past 10 years. So this beta p again represents the sort of premium in terms of the number of wars which a country would likely experience in the next 10 years in terms of whether they had a war in the last 10 years. In the next video, we're going to talk about what it means when we interact our dummy variables with continuous variables. I'll see you then.